Welcome back to Introduction to iOS Application Development at SSFS. In the last video, we took a quick look at classes and inheritance, and this time we're going to examine collections such as arrays and dictionaries. Arrays you may have seen before when we studied Python, but as a reminder, they're a very good way to store multiple pieces of information. It's actually fairly simple to declare an array in Swift. You give it a variable or constant title. I'll use var this time. And then the name of the array. And then I enclose my array in square brackets. And for example, I'll just put a couple of strings in here. English, biology, history. So this array has strings in it, but you can make an array with any data type. It could be ints or doubles, or even custom data types that you create using structs or classes. It's possible to create a uh, blank array. So I can do that with, um, I'll use a numbers array, and I'll give it a type, and I'll actually enclose the type in square brackets as well. And then I use, whoops, an empty set of square brackets. So the only really difference is, only real difference is, I'm actually putting the type in square brackets to designate an array. Notice I can create arrays with either let or var. And if I use var, I can actually modify the array. So I could add and remove elements and change elements. But if, you use, if I use let, it's just like a constant. I cannot change members of that array. So it's just something to keep in mind as you're creating them. There are certain array methods that we'll talk about in a few minutes that will work on both var and let types. So even if you have a non-mutable array, you can still use the different um, array methods. Well, let's actually talk about a couple of those methods. Uh, the first is count. So I can tell how many items are in an array. So I can do print classes.count. And if I go ahead and run this, I get three, because there are three elements in that array. Another common one is uh, is empty. So I can do print classes is empty. Whoops, whoops. And sorry, it's like that. And if I run that, it's false because it's not empty. But if I run that on the numbers array, is empty, I should get true. And I do. As a reminder, arrays are zero indexed, which means that this element is at position zero, one, and two. So you always start counting in an array from zero. So if I wanted to print classes one, that should give me biology zero and one. So let's check to make sure it does. And it does. So that works. It is possible to change or update the items in an array. And the way you do that is start with the array. And then the index or position. So I'm going to update history. And I'm going to make it AP history. And now if I print classes, I see that history has been changed to AP history. You can append items to an array when it just basically just sticks them at the end. So I can do classes.append and I'll append math. I can do classes.append in Spanish. And now if I print classes, I see that those two items have been appended to the end of an array. I can also remove items. So I can do classes.removeAt. And I can remove uh, an item at a particular index. So if I remove at index 1, so at 0, 1, I should be removing biology. So let's print. And notice biology has been removed. There's also a, a remove last and a remove all. Remove last obviously removes the last item in the array. Remove all removes everything. 
that's a very brief look at arrays. Again, hopefully a lot of this is, re is review. Uh, so let's take a look at dictionaries. Dictionaries are similar to arrays, but they have what are called key value pairs. So let's go ahead and see what a typical dictionary looks like. So I'm going to start with one called pictures. And this is going to be a, a dictionary of recent best pictures. So the way you structure a dictionary is you have a key and a value. Whoops, spot value. Spotlight is the movie. And so this is a single item in a dictionary. This is the key. This is the value. So this is an int and this is a string. As with arrays, I can have keys and values of any type I want, even custom types. So let me go ahead and add another couple key value pairs. So this is 2017. And I know this is right, but I'll illustrate a point with this later. And then 2018, the shape of water. So this dictionary has three key value pairs. If I wanted to create a blank one, I have to put my types in the bracket. So I could have one of string, string, and that equals a blank dictionary. And again, these data types um, can be anything. And it looks like I did something wrong here. Ah, I forgot. I said equal. It should have just been like that. Put a colon in the type, and that's better. Too many equal signs in that one. Well, as we said before, we can modify a dictionary. Um, we know that this is not the correct best picture. So if I want to change that, I can say uh, pictures. And then I put in the key. And then I set it to what the correct value should be. And now if I print pictures, it shows the correct key. But notice that it changed the order of the values, and, or the, the key value pairs. And that's because in dictionaries, the key value order does not matter. Since I'm accessing items by the key, it doesn't matter which order the key is in because it's not indexed the same way arrays in. There may be occasions where you actually want to preserve the old value before changing it. So let me go back and uh, I'm going to change this back. Let me delete this line. I'm going to make sure this is still, oops, let me print out my uh, pictures dictionary. I want to make sure it's still La La Land. Okay, good. So it still says La La Land. So if I wanted to keep the name of this, but I wanted to change the value, uh, I'm going to put wrong movie equals pictures. I use the update value for key method. And so the notice that the value goes first. So this is going to be the new value and then the key that I want. In this case, it's 2017. So now if I print pictures, and run that, I see that it has been updated. But if I also print wrong movie, it's actually kept the old title. Notice it says I'm getting an, a, a warning here. And that has to do with this term called optional. And we'll have more to say about that in the next unit. Um, for right now, we're just going to pretend the optional doesn't exist. And we'll talk about it at some other point. It's also relatively simple to add new elements to a dictionary. The way I do that is just to say pictures, and then I give it a key. In this case, I'll use 2015. And then I set the value for that key. And if I print that, I can see that Birdman has been 
added. So it's again very simple to add elements. If I wanted to remove an element from a dictionary, I can just set its value to nil. So if I do pictures and then uh, let's do 2016 equals nil. And again, nil is a special keyword that essentially means nothing. And then print pictures. We should see that 2016 is no longer there. So setting a, setting a key equal to nil or a value equal to nil is one way to remove it. If I wanted to access just the uh, values in a dictionary, I can do that by the following. I can say let years equal array. Since it's a, since it's a group of, of keys or values, I need to put them in an array. And I can go pictures.keys. And what this is going to do, actually we call this years. This is going to give me an array of all the years in that dictionary. So if I print years. I just get the years. I can do the same with values. I could say let movies equal array pictures dot values. Oh, forgot to print it. Uh, then let's print it. Oops, well, movies. And there are the movies. So that's a brief look at uh, Swift collections, dictionaries, and arrays. And coming up next, we'll take a look at loops, the for and while loops to be specific.